And Mike, I need you to jump in on this one as well. Let's go over to Jersey and focus in on Steve Peichel and this Rutgers team who has a guy in Ace Bailey from everything that I've seen. I know you guys have seen him time and time again, whether just footage or even live in person. He's the real deal. And he's going to be challenging Cooper Flagg for that number one overall pick in the 2025 NBA draft. But then also is Dylan Har Harper, a lottery pick for this group and other guys that have been with this Rutgers team that are veterans that can provide some stability in the backcourt and also in the front court. So, Jeff, with this situation with Steve Peichel and Rutgers, how does he make it work? I, I, do you keep guys like Ace Bailey and Dylan Harper locked into what your culture and what your philosophy is and not allow them to go rogue just because they're trying to help out their draft status and focus their attention on the NBA? Yeah, I, I'm worried. I'm worried for Pico here just because he, he's never coached <laughs> one and dones like this. And, and it's a different yeah. era, guys, of one and dones. And I'll give you an example. Um, you know, these guys now are not doing uh, – some of them are not doing uh, – interviews on camera interviews without getting paid for them from the media that's never happened in the past right like things of that nature have changed where the, the players are running the programs now and Pikeville's not used to that he's used to getting guys that are bringing their hard hats they're going to play harder than everybody that are going to defend at a high level that are going to grind it out and now you got two dudes that frankly are going to want to score and going to want to do it their way and I just don't know if this is the perfect synergy between coach and player in this era. Yeah, I'm with you on that, Jeff. And Mike, when you think about that from guys that have been in this Rutgers program, like, a, for example, Jeremiah Williams, right, who has success at Rutgers before he had his injury. How do you make that dynamic work when you have these young guys knowing that they're only going to be there for a season, but getting them to buy into the team philosophy because you want to have success, which helps you out individually with your career. Yeah, I think it's hard because these guys are only here for eight, nine months, uh, right? You show up in June and then by the time the season's over, they're, they're off doing pre-draft workouts and, and all that stuff. So uh, you look at Jeremiah Williams, you look at Jordan Derekak and, and some of these guys, those are, are really some of the more important pieces on this team. Because I, I do think it's exciting that you have in this conference – two potential one and dones that could go top five. It hasn't happened since 07 with, with Greg Oden and Mike Conley. Uh, now that Ohio state team, although they made it to the national championship and lost, they had better pieces around those guys. Um, and, and so that's, that's kind of my biggest question mark. Like I think you, you see Dylan Harper, um, you see Ace Bailey, just the explosiveness offensively. That's, that's there. Um, those are two guys that can score at a high level. I, I, I think you know, I talked to Dowster about this, but, but Dylan Harper kind of reminded me a bit of, of Shea Gill, just Alexander and, and, uh, with the way he kind of uses his frame to punish you in the mid range at the rim. Ace is a total freak, uh, just a tantalizing ability and skill set. My worry for them is the shot profile. And I, I wonder if, if Steve Peichel can manage that beyond just all the other distractions. Can you reel in the shot profile, the quality of the shot? Because it's going to lead to a lot of volatility for this team. Like, I think, you know, I think they were fairly rated before the season. Um, I may not have them as a top 25 team, but middle of the pack, Big Ten, like they're too talented for those two guys yeah. to be like a bottom feeder. But they're, they're not experienced in some areas to be contending for the top of the Big Ten. And look, like all that stuff showed itself in the exhibition. I don't want to take too much from the exhibition. But they got punished on the glass. You're going to have a lot of yeah. freshman mistakes defensively. Um, and it starts on the defensive end. That's been the makeup of this team uh, for Steve Peichel over the years. And this this team and the way it's constructed is a departure from that. So he's going to need to instill those same principles in these guys if they want a chance of winning consistently. But, like, I, I don't know if their defense is going to be able to compensate for the volatility that they're going to have offensively. And I think that's just going to lead to inconsistency. And I think there's like legitimate off the rails potential for, for this team. Yeah. Um, and it, cause yeah. it's just, it's a lot to try to throw together in one year. If it goes bad guys, if it starts to go bad, it could get ugly. That's what I would say. Yeah. Like, yeah. I I'm with you, Jeff. I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. Like Michigan really last year. This I know you're about to say right. Michigan last year. <laughs> no, and, and it's like, Jeff, I'll say it for you. 
Yeah, no, don't have a starting you know, it's all big. About they don't have a yeah. they yeah. don't have a starting big. Um, they're you know, they're going to end up playing Martini and Bailey in extended minutes at the five until their uh, freshman is ready to play. I think they started like Ogbole in, against Saint. No, 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 yeah. no. Yeah. You can't you can't do that and expect you know a good return. Um, yeah. When it comes to J. Mike and Jeremiah Williams, their chemistry with Ace and Dylan is going to be so important. And are those and are guys going to be able to reduce their roles for the betterment of the team? I don't know. You know, J. Mike is going to end up with a lot of like third and fourth option defenders on him. Where we're like he's 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 gonna be able to cook whoever's in front of him. Is he gonna be frustrated because he's not getting those touches? I don't know, yeah. but especially Jeremiah and Dylan, man. If if their chemistry is right, the ceiling on this team is removed. Their their chemistry has to be right. Watching the St. John's Rutgers game, their chemistry was not right at all whatsoever. Between that. And they're and what's going on at the five spot? Uh, I guess they ran out of money, but man, um, it's 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 going to be up and down. I'm not I'm not really worried offensively because I their offense has always been kind of trash to me. Not going to lie. So if you got two or three, yeah, their guys defense kinda, their defense hasn't been like this. Their defense hasn't been. Yeah, like this. yeah, yeah. Their defense. That's. That's my thing. Off offensively, I'm not worried, but defensively, if that's not a Pico defense, they're going to be yeah. in a lot of trouble. Right. Or even seventy five percent of yeah. a Pico defense. Just yeah. just yeah. be somewhat of a Pico defense. But if you're breaking down at one or two positions every single possession, I mean, you're going to see these high scoring games where they're losing like like eighty five to like seventy eight and like all these non pico scores, you know? And guys yeah. want to hoop. Yeah. They want to play. They're not going to slow it down and try to win games 52 to 47. That's just that's just not in these players DNA. Um but we'll see how that goes. Yeah, no doubt about and, that. And that's but I was real quick that. like that's that's more what I'm getting at. That's that's what I'm getting at. Like I think no one's doubting the talent from from those two guys. No one is doubting that. Like if we're talking about the pieces around them can they step up? Um, you know, and that's going to be the question because, I, like, right now, and I know it's one exhibition game that we watch with this collective group. Arkansas beat Purdue in an exhibition game last year, right? Like, there's, there's, there's always one-offs, but there's, there are certain traits that younger players possess and teams that haven't gelled together possess that I think showed itself in that exhibition. Like, offensively, it was a lot of like head down, try to get to the rim. I got stopped. Throw it back out. Yeah, I got yeah. stopped. Like there wasn't a lot of cohesion, and so what's going to happen? They're going to have very volatile nights. So when they are hitting those really tough shots that Ace and Dylan shoot, they're going to beat really good teams in this conference. They are like they're going to be able to to play offensively with anybody. But the flip side of that is when you're not making those shots, they could lose to anybody in this conference. So that that's yeah. that's going to be yeah. the question: how they manage that. Can you get to 500 in this conference? Because 500 got you fifth place last year. So that, that's Arkansas question. was also really trying to win that game last year with uh, Musk. Yeah. <laughs> Musk like had his shirt off and everything. Uh, <laughs> and Painter out there trying to get – Painter out there like working different like lineups and all this. Musk is out there like slapping the floor. And yeah. Arkansas mm-hmm. fans were going nuts. I was like, yo, y'all don't even understand what just happened. And sure enough, right. one goes right. to the final four – the other one's team falls apart half halfway through January. So, yeah. 